my final thoughts for the week before I turn my focus towards Auburn is to look at this game against Alabama as growth. When you're a football coach and you're practicing with your team daily and you see those kids go out there and battle their guts out every week to figure out who's going to be the best 11 on offense, who's going to be the best 11 on defense, there's so many intangibles that happen weekly. And what we get to see is a small sample size of that on Saturday. And in such a big environment for us to lay the egg we did in the first half, to be able to come back and compete and battle our guts out, to actually get in the lead midway through the fourth quarter going into the final of the game and have what happened happen to us, to me, can only make us stronger. What I would have been more disappointed in, and I heard too many people say this, that they just wish we'd gotten blown out. Well, to me, that would have even left a worse taste in my mouth. I am glad we battled our guts out. I am glad that we fought to the very end. I'm glad that we made them sweat because what we showed was the potential of what our program and where our team is at. Believe it or not, as a program, as as spoiled as we are as Georgia fans, it's very easy for us to get caught up and enamored with this glorious, uh, you know, if you want to call it a storyline of just every game being a blowout and us beating every team by 40 and everything just being perfectly fine. To me, the grit and growth of a program is how you recover and how you come out of the situation that was presented to us after Saturday night's loss. I don't care about Alabama fans and how they feel right now. They can feel whatever the way they want to. Congratulations to them winning the ball game. Not going to say anything other than that. But I'm proud of our program for fighting. I'm proud of our uh, our kids who go out there weekly and battle their guts out in order to try to get better for their program so that what they represent as the brand on their helmet is as important as what they're trying to carry out functionally and executing on the football field. I think there's opportunities going forward where we probably should look at personnel issues, both on the offensive line, at tight end, on the defensive line, in the defensive secondary. We've got to look at some options that's going to put us and make us more successful. And we saw those things as we went through the game where we had to morph and change things up and make adjustments that were going to help us get back in the ball game. You can listen to what Alabama fans say that they let their foot off the pedal, whatever it may be. What I see is if you're a great program, as they claim to be, you put your foot on the throat and you don't let them come back. But we did. All right. You don't let the offense have any ounce of movement, but we did. You suffocate them. You don't let them have an option of of gaining yards down the field. You still drive them in the ground and give them no hope whatsoever and take the life out of them. They didn't do that. We fought our guts out to come back and be in the lead, regardless of how long it was. There should be no reason being in Tuscaloosa for us to turn the ball over four times, plus give them a safety, all right? With all the different penalties that happened, to me, we could have gone either way. I was upset with some of the penalty flags thrown, but there were some thrown on them too, so to me, that all equaled out. But when you turn the ball over four times on the road, and you still have a chance to win the ball game at the end, which we were looking like we were going to do, that's something to be hopeful for. And that's all we can be because going forward, our identity has to be something that goes beyond just what we're doing offensively and what we're doing defensively. We got a long season in front of us. There is a lot of intangibles that we still don't even know about. There are still people right now that we're not talking about that is going to be the productivity that we're going to see going into season as far as moving forward towards the Texas game, which is another benchmark to the Ole Miss game. But you can't even look at it in that regard. I don't care. It's every team every week. Coach Smart says it plainly, and I love it, You know that humility is just one week away. And it's very simple that we have got to approach every week to get better, to continue to execute at a high level, to gain confidence that lets us know that we can play four quarters of football and put it together. And if we do that, we are going to see a program that is just going to meet every expectation that we should have of them. I love right now that Carson Beck is probably fighting some demons. 
honestly. He needs to because all it's going to do is make him grow and stretch and go through some uncomfortableness that he needs to deal with right now so that he can get back to the performance level that we as a fan base see in him. There's a lot of different athletes out there playing their guts out right now every week trying to do what's right trying to be the best person they can be, the best athlete they can be, so that they can win for the program and for the fan base and for themselves. But right now, there's a lot of soul searching going on too because expectations are high and they've been high. We're spoiled as a fan base. But regardless, I think we're going to see great things going forward. I really am looking at these main components. There are two running backs in Branson Robinson and Trevor Etienne that need to continue to gain reps, that need to continue to get stronger and continue to move forward and stay healthy. And they are going to be a solid AB duo until Roderick Robinson gets back. Nate Frazier needs to grow. We've got a chance to see him spotlight. We know what his potential is, but he's also a freshman and he's also learning. So let's be patient with him because I know a lot of people are asking, where's Nate Frazier at after we saw in the Clemson game? He's there. He's working, he's getting better, but he's also having to probably fight a little demons because I'm sure he probably got a little, you know, feeling good about himself after the Clemson game and now reality's hitting with him out on the practice field now and in ball games. Let him grow. Let him learn to grow. We got a lot of good things coming from our offensive line, but inconsistencies at tackle at times, and we're struggling, it seems, to put five guys together that are working as a unit. I hope and pray that we'd finally figure out who we wanted our tackle spots and who wants those two spots. The guard center combo still got to continue to work. Can you get better on pass pro? Continue to communicate correctly. Understanding those people that have come in that are new this year that we're counting on from the transfer portal, they learn the playbook better. We need to see Colby Young more. We want to see Anthony Evans more. Obviously, we want to see what Lawson Lucky can do combo with Oscar Delp at the tight end position more. There's a lot of things going on in that position as well. But for those of you who think Carson Beck needs to be benched because of his performance in the first quarter, second quarter of the game, just need to have a reality check. I know there's always woulda, shoulda, couldas, but I want you to understand, think about this. If he completes that ball to Arian Smith on the second play from scrimmage, he would have two completions. He would have been two for two for 67 yards, and they would have been inside the red zone looking to score right after Alabama scored their first touchdown. Now, whether they score or not, that's up to the gods for the football gods. But at least we walk away with a field goal plus two that sets up a huge amount of confidence for Arian and for Carson Beck. Now, we're not saying that those things after the fact could have still happened, but I do know that that changes when you've got a quarterback who's in rhythm, who's got receivers catching the football, and all of a sudden you're setting yourself up for the first touchdown right after they've punched us in the mouth and we're about to punch them back. So if you look at those things, I think you can see as we progressed in the game, that was what we wanted to see. We saw a team offensively fighting back, doing everything they could, to try to get their team back in the ball game. The defense had to stretch. The defense was uncomfortable. They could not handle outside the tackle box. Jalen Milrow being a quarterback at plus one, being a running quarterback, and a lot of their run scheme built around him and using the running back as decoys and getting outside tackle was their main platform offensively in their running scheme. We finally made adjustments to it. We got better at it. We started making tackles. We started securing, and we made some defensive stops when we needed to so that we could get our offense back out on the field and score touchdowns. It just so happened, unfortunately, at the end when it came down to it, the 50-50 balls both on the defensive side and the offensive side let us down. I had mentioned earlier the week before we played that 50-50 balls were going to be the big deal because we had not been stretched yet defensively, and I was wondering how Dalen Everett and Julian Humphreys was going to handle that. And for the most part, I would say that we probably didn't do a very good job of it. But guess what? They're going to get better at it. They're going to continue to get reps at practice against very good athletes, and they're going to continue to hone their skills on Saturday uh, game days. So we've just got to be patient with that. You've got to be patient with that. K.J. Bolden is continuing to approve at safety. You know, there's probably not one person in that locker room that's not sitting there thinking to themselves of how they felt sitting there defeated after an ugly loss, even as hard as they fought to get back in that ball game. But believe it or not, 
that's the beauty of a good football team. And to me, I always felt like a team that was a really good football team, a solid team that I coached, was a team that got better every week. So what we've got to do is we've got to go out and see us execute against Auburn. We've got to see us go out and be efficient in four quarters of football, playing solid defense and executing on offense. And all of a sudden, this game that we played in week five, our fourth ball game, will become something of the past. Does it nag at us a little bit because it's Bama? Sure. But you got to have a short-term memory. You got to flush it. You got to let it go. You got to move on. You got to keep these kids in the present with a short-term memory that every week we're battling to win the football game by being the better team than who we're playing. And if you can keep your kids focused that way, that's what means something. And that's what's going to make you be a contender when it comes to the end of the season, when it's going to matter, all right, and when we've got to go out there and play our best football that we've seen a program rise, get stronger, get better, get fundamentally just to a superior component, both defensively and offensively, and be that team that we know that they can be playing in the playoffs at the end of the year, playing their best football then. Does it hurt to lose? Sure. But to me, when you lose, especially the way they did, it should make them hungry. It should make them want it more. And that's what I want to see, just like Coach Smart said it in the locker room with his kids as they sat there kind of feeling dejected and defeated. It's how you respond to those kind of deals is to me how I'm going to understand who are my leaders and who are the people who give a damn about coming back and doing their job and seeing that this team reaches the potential it should be. So, dog fans, don't be disappointed. Have a short-term memory. Is it going to hurt a little bit? Sure. Is Bama fans in the mentions right now? Sure. Let them have their fun. But when it comes down to it, we'll know who the better team is when we get to the end of the year. So stay behind your dogs. Keep rooting for them. Bleed that red and black. And as always, go dogs.